بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, This is a quick overview of this uh, course at assubah.com Hajj, its importance, virtues, rituals and rulings uh, the course is ideal for those intending to go for Hajj and also uh, for those wanting to learn further about Hajj, an immense pillar of Islam, uh, which embodies many lessons, right? We, we know that Hajj is one of the central pillars of worship uh, in our deen alongside Salah, Saum and Zakah. Uh, one of the recent scholars, Allama Yusuf Banuri, rahimahullah, mentioned that each of these pillars embodies certain uh, wisdoms uh, and lessons which the other one does not. Right. So Hajj has certain uh, wisdoms and lessons for us to take, which the other uh, pillars of ibadah do not. And Hajj is a very special act of worship. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, describes it as ibadatul umr, the worship of a lifetime. And one of the very important lessons that we learn from Hajj, which is explained on the course, is as mentioned in Surah Al-Hajj, in the context of Hajj, وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ that uh, part of what the Hajj is about, in fact, the very meaning of the term Hajj is al-qastu ila shay' al is uh, essentially a pilgrimage towards sacred spaces, sacred sites. Um, and uh, the Quran says, those who show reverence to the symbols, to the salient features, to the signs of Allah, then that arises from the reverence that they have of Allah in their hearts, right? So if somebody has the reverence of Allah in their hearts, then the symbols and the signs that represent Allah's deen, they will show reverence for that, like the Kaaba, like Arafat, um, and so on, right? This is a very important lesson that we uh, understand from Hajj and that we must imbue in our uh, minds when we are going for Hajj, right? It's a very important lesson because um, of the, the prevailing culture uh, nowadays uh, of the opposite of that, of uh, where godlessness prevails and the symbols of godlessness are revered are respected, while the symbols of religion are derided and mocked, right? So, so this is a very important um, lesson and, and uh, wisdom of Hajj. So in, in the course, what's covered is the overall purpose of a Hajj. Obviously, Hajj has the overall purpose of being a pillar of worship where the servant surrenders to Allah's command and struggles in Allah's path and uh, exalts Allah and glorifies him and the dhikr of him, as the Quran mentions in the context of Hajj, uh, that uh, over and over again about doing dhikr of Allah. But it also has this purpose, as I mentioned, of showing reverence to the symbols of Allah and also, it mentions the yashhadu manafi'a lahu to witness the many immense benefits to them. So, when a person does the Hajj and is present in those locations, does the tawaf, does the istilam, does the sa'i, it does the wukuf, there's many immense benefits that they receive of forgiveness, of salvation from Jahannam, of many rewards. Right? Uh, Allama Yusuf Banuri mentioned that these two uh, 
passages of the Quran, and these embody the philosophy and uh, the spirit of Hajj. And an explanation of the verses and hadiths on Hajj, like the ayah of the Quran, Right? It is uh, a due upon man um, that they owe to Allah. Right? It is Allah's due upon man. Um, those able to find a path to it to perform Hajj to the house to, to um, perform Hajj to the Kaaba and this is a very emphatic way in which Allah describes the obligation of Hajj right so the explanation of the verses and hadiths on Hajj um, and uh, the Hajj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because that is obviously the example that we want to follow. Uh, so, so there's a description of the Hajj of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alongside the uh, description of the actual rituals of Hajj uh, themselves. The virtues of Hajj. So not only is Hajj an important obligation, it is, it is also a blessed uh, gift and a privilege. So even those that uh, don't have the means to go for Hajj, and obviously only those that do have the means, it's an obligation on them. But even those that don't have the means, they would yearn to go for Hajj because of the virtues. So if the opportunity does arise, say somebody offers them a gift to go, then they would want to go because of these immense virtues of Hajj. On whom is Hajj obligatory? What is the nature of the obligation? As in, what is the nature of the obligation um, in the sense that is the obligation immediate or can it be deferred? As in, if Hajj becomes obligatory in a particular year, do they have to go Hajj in that very same year? Or um, can they do it a bit later on in, the, in, in their life? Because Hajj is obligatory only once in a lifetime, once it becomes obligatory. Right, and if it is obligatory in that very same year, would there be uh, what? What are good reasons why they can delay it? Right, so all of that's discussed in the course uh, ihram and the types of Hajj. So there's different types of Hajj regarding uh, how uh, Umrah is done with the Hajj. Right, so Hajj is the major pilgrimage, al Hajj al al Hajj al Akbar, al Hajj al Kubra. The major pilgrimage is Hajj. Umrah is the, is the minor pilgrimage, al hajjat al or al hajj al-Asghar. And uh, often uh, people, and, and this, is, uh, this is also more virtuous to do, is that they would combine the two. They would combine Umrah and Hajj. But um, how is it combined? It, uh, that, that, that will, um, depending on how it's combined, that will determine which type of Hajj they are doing. Is it Qiran? Is it Tamattu? And if they're not combining with uh, Umrah, then it's uh, Ifrad. So Ihram, what is Ihram? And uh, the, 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 the types of Hajj, which Hajj did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Right, from the three types of Hajj, which Hajj did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Um, Talbiyah, the Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Right, which is a critical part of the ihram and also uh, part of the uh, actions of the hajj and umrah. Right, uh, restrictions of ihram. And uh, the boundaries of the haram and the miqats and their present locations because the ihram obviously has to be done before crossing the miqats. So where exactly are the miqats? Uh, that will be explored and, uh, we, uh, and uh, the Google Maps would be used to show that. Um, 
detailed explanation of the procedure of Hajj, of Hajj Ifrad, of Hajj Tamatu, and Hajj Qiran, and a standalone Umrah, plus the virtues of the different actions uh, during Hajj and Umrah. Penalties for violating the restrictions of Ihram or missing out uh, actions of Hajj. So somebody misses out a certain action of Hajj, what's the result of that? Obviously, if it's a very major action, then that would render the entire Hajj invalid. Um, right? Like the Arafah, missing the Arafah. But if it's certain other actions, then there are ways to make up for missing out a certain action. Uh, the rules of Fawat, meaning if they miss the Hajj, what, what will happen? As in they've entered into Ihram for Hajj, but then they miss the Hajj, then what must they do? Rules of ihsar, where a person has entered into ihram, but then they're not able to, um, they're not able to ent enter the haram, or they're not able to do certain uh, important actions of the uh, umrah or hajj. Then, as in they are probably imprisoned or barred, or they fall severely ill. Then, what what should they do? Um, hajj al badal, uh, where somebody does hajj on behalf of another. What, what are the rules? What are the restrictions of that? And uh, why does that even exist in the first place? Uh, advice for women on their menstrual period. And also uh, the rules of that are specific to women in the Hajj. Because even though generally it's the same, there are a few aspects where uh, the rules for women differ. Like, for example, the Talbiya. Um, the men will say talbiyah allowed, women will say it softly. Or uh, the restrictions of ihram, there are certain restrictions when it comes to clothing for, for men that don't apply to women, for example. And the ziyara, when, uh, um, when we go to Medina uh, Munawwara and we present ourselves to uh, the rawdah of Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa what are the virtues of that and what's the procedure of that and what's the adab, what's the etiquette, right? And some recommendations and advice. So over some detailed course, over 12 hours of content, uh, 12 uh, sessions, and it's uh, based on the Hanafi Madhab and, uh, and it, it consults a, a wide range of sources, both classical and uh, modern. So see, these are some of the uh, texts that are that were that, that that are used that were used for the course. Uh, Al Basalik fil Manasik, Al Bahru al Amiq, uh, the Hajjatul Wada, which is a detailed description of the Hajj of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, um, and the Manasik of Mulla Ali Qari, um, and Imam Al Ghazali's explanation of the wisdoms of Hajj and its different rituals. Right, Jazakumullah Khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.